Hey student, Lars here. I want to talk to you about capacitors. Specifically, about how they charge and discharge, and we're going to watch them over time, because they take time for them to charge. What I want to do is I want to charge the capacitor with this guy, which is a variable DC power supply, and I want to discharge the capacitor through this very cool load. This is a, a light from a string of Christmas tree lights. Now it's old school. It's that kind where if one blew, they all blew. Remember that? It was maddening. This is a five volt bulb. You can get them in five or I think it was 3.3. Anyway, I've got one of these and it's in my circuit. What I have here is I've got a switch. I'm going to use the switch to switch the capacitor onto charge and then I'm going to flick the switch and I'm going to put the charge of the capacitor in through the load, which is the light bulb. Let's take a look at the circuit. Cool, here we go. So now, we've got our variable DC power supply over here and it's set to what? So 6.5 volts, that's right. This, this is 6.5 volts. Now, this is a 6.3 volt capacitor. I put this up just a little bit more. Actually, what I did was I tested it. I put my uh, DMM over this and I was testing the voltage on this and I turned this guy up until I could actually get just under 6.3 volts going into that thing. And the reason was because I've got this resistor in here. So the current's going through the resistor and this actually, I get a voltage drop across here, right? So I don't get all of the 6.5 volts right here. So I lose some of it. Anyway, so I can charge this guy to 6.3 volts. And then what I want to do is I want to study how this current, when I flick this switch, what kind of switch is that? Single pole double throw switch. So when it's this way, it'll be charging. When it's that way, it's going to be going over here and all of this current is going to go through this load. Let's check it out. Now, before we do this, you will notice something. We're also going to calculate this. Maybe you can calculate yourself. So, uh, what you'll find is that when you do calculate this, it's a little bit funky. You're not quite getting the results that we do because we're going to study to see how much time it takes to charge and discharge the capacitor. And we're going to watch the charge on this guy. What is this? Analog multimeter. Listen, digital multimeters are very cool. Analog multimeters are even cooler. The reason is because you can watch fluctuations in the circuit over time, and that's exactly what we want to do. So here's the circuit. I'm starting with the capacitor fully discharged. There's no charge in it at all. I'm going to charge it with this switch, and we'll watch it go up. Ready? Here we go. See, it goes up pretty quickly at first, and then it slows down and slows down, because it's getting fuller and fuller. As it's getting really full, it doesn't want any more charge. So the electrons in there are going, no, dude, I don't care if you're pushing them in with 6.3 volts. I don't want any more. So it gets to the point where it's so full and then it stops. But if we were to watch that for another like two minutes, you'd actually see it go up a very, very slight amount. But we're not going to do that. So what I really want to do is I want to time this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as soon as I flick the switch, I'm going to press play here and we'll watch how long this watch you'll see it it'll come on really brightly and then it'll get really dim and what I want to do is it hit stop when it gets to technically 99% of its brightness which will be five time constants here we go ready and go see it's nice and bright and it's going down and down and down and down and down and I would say it's done now so four seconds what I want to do now is remove the bulb from the circuit and I want to drive this pump instead so this is a really cool pneumatic pump. It's a three diaphragm pump. It's a DC motor, it's a six volt motor, and it's connected to this pneumatic cylinder. So it'll be cool to actually see something you know, move and see how much movement we can get out of this little guy here. So we're gonna charge it up. So first of all, I've got to remove this bulb from the circuit. I'm gonna put the wire going into the bulb over on a different pin. Now, this is the wire for the motor, so I'm gonna put that in there. The motor itself draws a lot of current, so it's not going to like this resistor. I'm taking it right out. I'm bypassing the resistor completely. So here we go. Here's the circuit again. So the resistor is going to be gone. So two things are going to happen. One is the motor, which is, that's the motor now, is going to drive faster, better, more better. And this guy is going to charge more quickly because we don't have a resistor limiting the charge. We'll see that in the meter. Here we go. So I will charge it. Oh, it's already got a little bit of charge in it. Okay, here we go. And charge. Go! See, that was pretty quick. Now when I flick this over, watch this go. 
And I think it'll go for, I don't know, it should, not as long as the light bulb, but it'll go. Here we go, and go. Actually, that's, that's pretty long. That's quite remarkable. That's surprising that this capacitor is going to do that. So this capacitor, move this all the way out there. Let me charge it again. Let me see actually how much force we can get out of this. Okay, I'm charging it up. Okay, that's a full charge. And I'm going to hold it. And go. Yeah, that's pretty good. See? Quite remarkable what these little capacitors can do. Actually, that's a pretty big capacitor. Hey, let's do some math. Actually, I wasn't going to do this, but let's do it. Let's talk about time constants and figure out exactly how much time it took for the capacitor to, to discharge and what all that means. Um, what we do, actually, we don't study the full time it takes for a capacitor to discharge or to charge because there's that like, kind of 0.1%. If we were to take a look at it charging, as we did, and I had mentioned that it was going to take like another two or three minutes for it to actually move just a little, little, little bit. So if we were to include those two minutes, it would be like an enormous amount of time for us to say it's finally fully charged. So what we do is we say, you know what, let's just study to see how long it takes to do uh, like 99% charge. And then forget about the rest of it. And that's good enough for us. So what that is actually five time constants. And one time constant is, is actually really complicated. I'll show it. I'll show you the formula. Here we go. Ready? Okay. So the formula for this is tau equals R. C, uh, uh, that's it. <laughs> it's pretty simple. Let's check it out. So, first of all, we have to know what the resistance is. And you may be thinking, actually, does voltage have anything to do with this? Like, we haven't even talked about voltage. You know what? I could erase that, and I could erase that, and the number's going to be the same. Because, technically, the capacitor is going to discharge no matter what. Even if it's already got, if, if it's a 10-volt capacitor, and it's full, it's going to discharge. If it's a 100 volt capacitor, the flow is actually going to be pushed out a lot quicker. The, the flow rate is going to be higher, but still it's going to take just as much time to discharge as another capacitor with the same capacitance dealing with the same resistance would have that was 10 volts. So the voltage doesn't really matter because, you know, the faster, the faster, voltage isn't fast. The, <laughs> The higher the voltage, the greater the push. Remember, voltage is energy per coulomb, right? So the greater the push for every single coulomb, so it actually discharges more stuff, but it's got more in it, so it still takes the same amount of time to charge. Uh, discharge? Does that make sense? I hope it does. Okay, let's roll with this. So I can actually take these voltages out of here, but we'll leave them. RC. Now, it's important to actually take a look at this. we got 17 ohms over here. And we're, Again, we're looking at the discharge, right? So the current is actually coming out of here. Let me just get this guy going. We know when it's discharging, the current comes out of here and it goes that way. So it's going through this resistor and it's going through that resistor. So we need to put that resistance into the formula. And that is 35. So 35 ohms and the capacitance is this big honking thing over here. You know, it's funny capacitors. You'll find capacitors with really large numbers in them. Although... That's just 100 microfarads. But I guess, you know, they like to label these things with microfarads. So let's roll with that. So we know that we've got my total resistance, which is 35 ohms times the capacitance, which is 100 times 10 to the minus 3 farads. Now calculate that, and you'll see the answer. You'll notice that that number... Oh, sorry, that's one-fifth, right? We have to take that number and multiply it by five to get the total discharge because, as you remember, this one time constant is only the amount of time it takes for the capacitor to charge 63% of the time. We need five of those to go to maximum. So you will then do this number, you will calculate that number, and you'll get a number here, and it should be 4.19 seconds, but it might not be, and there may be a reason for that, and it actually isn't, and I would like to challenge you to figure out why not. There's something actually kind of weird and funky going on here because of the components we're using. If you took Introduction to Controls, look at Lab 5, sorry, which lab is that in? Lab 5. Mm, study that and you'll find out 
why this number that you're going to calculate down here is not 4.19 seconds. So I hope you got something out of that. And I thought it was pretty cool to actually see a capacitor run a pneumatic pump and drive a pneumatic cylinder. And there was actually force. I actually felt the force coming out of a capacitor. It was pretty cool. If you have any questions, you know, you can always email me. Um, what we did was, you know, we really pinned down the understanding of what a time constant is and specifically kind of watch the capacitor charge and discharge. And it was pretty neat to see actually how long it took. And, of course, it was cool to use an analog multimeter. See you next time.